Greetings to all of you and God bless you today. I hope everybody's doing well. Folks, I'm going to keep saying it every time I come on here. Jesus is coming and Jesus is coming one day very, very, very soon. Folks, ever since I started my channel, I have done tons of videos covering the lie that is coming to the world following the rapture of the church. Once millions upon millions of born-again believers in Jesus Christ suddenly vanish one day very soon, the world is going to be in a state of complete and utter chaos. The globalists, the world leaders, and the elite are going to have to be ready to give an answer, to give the world a reason, a lie, to explain why everybody vanished. They were, they're not going to come out and say that Jesus Christ just came to rapture his church. No, it's going to be something involving aliens or UFOs or something along those lines. It is not a coincidence that our movies, our television shows, our entertainment industry is filled with UFOs, UFO abductions, aliens, and the supernatural. People are obsessed with this stuff, folks. It's not a coincidence that UFO sightings are an all-time high right now. It is not a coincidence that alien abduction reports are at an all-time high right now. It's not a coincidence that militaries around the world are coming out at this particular time releasing declassified footage of UFO encounters. And it is not a coincidence that the Roswell incident occurred and all of this UFO and alien stuff really started skyrocketing in 1947, right before Israel officially became a nation. Folks, this is all part of conditioning people to believe the lie that is coming after the rapture of the church. Folks, in regards to the UFO sightings that are skyrocketing and the alien abduction reports, people are absolutely seeing something, but it's not what they think. Like you see on the screen right here, no, I'm not an alien from outer space. I am a demonic fallen angel. I am not extraterrestrial. I am interdimensional. No, I don't come in peace. I come in the name of Satan, and my purpose is to deceive, harm, and to destroy you. We have to remember, folks, we are in a spiritual war. Like we read in the book of Ephesians, chapter 6, verse 12, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Notice what it says there at the end, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Now, where are these things showing up, these UFOs, these aliens, as they call them? You guessed correctly, in high places. When you go to the book of 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 6 to 12, the apostle Paul records the following, And ye know what withholdeth, that he might be revealed in his time. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who now letteth will let, until he be taken out of the way, and then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming." Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan, with all power and signs and lying wonders, and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie, that they all might be damned who believe not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. So very clearly there, the Apostle Paul gives the timeline of the events. Once the rapture of the church occurs, the restrainer is taken out of the way, and then that wicked's going to be revealed, referring to the future Antichrist. So the rapture happens, the restrainer is taken out of the way, and then the Antichrist is revealed. And after that, when you go down to verse 11 again, and for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. So the lie itself, because when you go to um, verse 8, even him, referring to the future Antichrist, whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders, right? This is, this is the strong delusion, but part of of this strong delusion and lie the world's going to believe, they're going to have to explain where everybody went. 
And they're not just going to come out and say, Jesus Christ just came to rapture his church. No, it's going to be something involving aliens or UFOs or something along those lines. And that brings me to what I want to share with you guys today. Again, folks, they're conditioning people to believe this lie that is coming after the rapture of the church and it's happening before our eyes. And it's going to get even crazier in the coming days, weeks, and months. Lord willing, unless Jesus comes first, we're watching every day on this channel. But get this, there is a new film that is coming out, which is actually called The King of the UFOs. You can see on the screen right here, The King of the UFOs that they're referring to is King Charles. So the, when you look at the synopsis of this film, the film explores the British royal family's interest in UFOs and the paranormal from the days of Lord Louis Mountbatten, Prince Philip, and now King Charles. It also explores the claims that King Charles flew a UFO back in 1975 in Canada. As soon as I saw this, that this film's being released called The King of UFOs, and it's talking about King Charles. You know, and I'm having some trouble finding the correct release date. Some places, apparently, you have access to watch this now. You got certain countries you can watch The King of UFOs now. Others, it's looking like it's going to be released either December 11th or December 12th, coming up here in a few days, when this film's gonna be released. And if you watch the trailer for this film, The King, of UFOs, it's all about putting pressure on King Charles to reveal the truth about UFOs and apply pressure on other world leaders to release more to the public. What really got my attention when I read the synopsis of this film is the part that said it's going to explore the claims that King Charles flew a UFO back in 1975 in Canada. But you know, I've done several videos on King Charles in the last few months, just the words that are coming out of his mouth and how he is beyond a shadow of a doubt, paving the way for the coming empire of the Antichrist. And he's all part of now, condition, part of conditioning the world again to believe the lie that is coming after the rapture of the church. I mean, you have a film coming out called The King of UFOs involving King Charles. And again, it's all about putting pressure on Charles and world leaders to reveal more truth about these UFOs. Folks, the world, again, is being conditioned to believe the lie that is coming after the rapture of the church. How exactly are they going to explain away the rapture? I don't claim to know that answer. It could be something like this. Maybe there's some sort of nuclear event. And then these things show up saying that, you know, oh, you guys have done a pretty darn good job destroying the planet. We're going to step in now and usher you in into a golden age, these aliens. And, you know, the, all those crazy people that don't want to adjust to our roles and be a part of this new golden age, we took them away somewhere uh, to some other planet or some other galaxy to teach them our ways, and then we'll bring them back at some point so they can be uh, uh, some a part of this golden age. It could go something like that. I'm not saying it will be, but folks, make no mistake about it. The narrative that's going on right now and where things are headed in the coming days, weeks, and months, Lord willing, the world is being conditioned to believe the lie that is coming after the rapture of the church. If you find yourself here after millions upon millions of people one day suddenly vanish, do not believe the lie that they're going to come out and say it was something involving aliens or UFOs. No, what really happened is what the Apostle Paul records in the Bible in the book of 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 16 to 18, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 50 to 53, John chapter 14, verses 1 to 3. Jesus Christ just came and suddenly removed, snatched away, snatched away, caught up those that are his, those that are saved, to be with them in heaven in something that is known the rapture of the church before a horrific time on the earth begins known as the tribulation period. You do not want to be here for what is coming on this planet. All I can tell you, if you're watching this video right now and you don't have Jesus Christ in your life, just look around the world right now at everything occurring and look at what your Bible says. You will see several things are true. The Bible is real. The Bible is alive. Jesus is real. Jesus is alive. And Jesus is coming back, and he's coming back one day, very, very, very soon. 
This current world order, it is sinking and it is sinking fast just like the Titanic. You need to get on the lifeboat right here and right now. That lifeboat is Jesus Christ in him alone. I'm not telling you to get religious. I'm telling you you can be saved right here, right now, as you're watching this video. Now is the accepted time. Now is the day of salvation. What do you have to do to be saved? The gospel of your salvation is found in the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 15, verses 1 to 4. Believe. You're believing Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins. The sin debt that you could never pay on your own. Jesus Christ paid it in full with his blood on the cross. So you could be reconciled back to him, forgiven of your sins, and be with him forever in heaven. So you're believing Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins. He was buried and he rose again. He resurrected on the third day as it is written in the scriptures. That's the gospel of your salvation. If you're still confused, here's the bottom line. Every single one of us is a sinner. We all miss the mark. We all fall short of the glory of God. And our sin separates us from a holy, a just, and a perfect God. But God loves you so much that he would come down. He would be born of a virgin. He became flesh. He dwelt among us. He was brutally tortured and crucified and shed his precious blood for you on that cross at Calvary. Again, the sin that, that you could never pay on your own. Jesus Christ paid it in full with his blood on the cross so you could be reconciled back to him, forgiven of your sins, and be with him forever in heaven. That is love, my friends. That is love. The bottom line is this. Heaven and hell are very real, literal places, and you will spend an eternity in one of those destinations. Hell is a real place. Eternal torment, eternal separation from God. I don't want you to go there. Jesus does not want you to go there. But if you die without Jesus Christ, you will be separated from God for eternity in hell. And I am going to tell you the truth because I love you. Jesus Christ is the only way to the kingdom of heaven and the only name that can save you. I am begging you. I am imploring you to get saved right now. Put your faith and your trust in the blood of Jesus right now. Believe Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins. He was buried and he rose again. He resurrected on the third day as it is written in the scriptures. And do it now because tomorrow is not promised. And make no mistake about it. Jesus is coming. And he's coming one day very, very, very soon. Keep looking up. Keep watching with me. And God bless you all.